Hey everybody, so today I am going to be putting my AMD Radeon RX 6900 XT underwater using this Corsair Hydro X Series XG7 RGB water block. Wow, what a mouthful of a product name. So looking inside of the Corsair packaging, you know, when you first open the box, um, there's really not that much there. You have the block itself, you have this little uh, uh, header cable for the RGB connecting to your uh, motherboard, um, and then even, you know, when you pick up the block, you're like, really? Is, is that it? Is, is there anything else there? I mean, you, you can see like the back of the block and all. But really, you know, then you pull up this and you're like, okay, yeah, there still isn't very much in there. But what we do have is we have a little manual. You have all your little uh, mounting screws, your plug tool, your two plugs, and the Corsair backplate. So, you know, really not much fanfare to this. Taking a look at the block itself, you know, it looks like we have this nice full cover, right, with various little fins or ridges for extra surface area heat dissipation. Um, we have the center area of the block with this, you know, clear uh, covering so you can see what's going on in there or you can see how nasty your loop is getting. Um, zooming in, we can see it's a serial flow, so, you know, there's no parallel flow areas anywhere inside this block. And then we have the uh, micro channel fin area over uh, the GPU. Um, Flipping this over at the back side, you know, we can once again see, oh, you know, the main cooling block doesn't really cover up the entire, uh, the entire area, uh, but, you know, mainly the components that really need it. We can see all of our pre-applied uh, thermal pads, which is nice, and uh, there's this plastic cover here which pr uh, protects the um, thermal paste that uh, Corsair has pre-applied for us. So that's nice because, you know, you don't have to use any other thermal paste. And then over here on the side, we have... Uh, this uh, RGB header for the lighting control. Um, one of the things that kind of stuck out to me was just like how much empty space there is over here, like this big void. And uh, you know, on the stock heat sink, um, you'd at least be getting some airflow over here uh, <clears throat> due to the fans above. So we'll have to take a look when we take the stock heat sink off, you know, what this area would look like now that, well, it's just kind of closed off. And if we transition to this side, we can see that there's a sticker here with some uh, uh, FCC information and power stuff, and I guess that has to be there because, uh, well, there's lights on this thing. But one of the good bits of information is the uh, light input rating, 5 volts at 640 milliamps. So if you're uh, worried about daisy chaining or anything like that, uh, you know uh, how much this is going to be drawing. So let's get to the installation of the water block. Um, here we have, you know, the car just on its own. And quite frankly, I almost feel bad uh, removing this air cooling heat sink that it came with. Like AMD did a really good job this generation. This thing is just solid, the quality, the feel is so nice. You can see we have these nice three fans and uh, uh, AMD has the fan idle feature. So, you know, when you're just sitting at your desktop or watching, you know, videos, or whatever, the GPU is not really working too hard and all these fans spin all the way down. So they're, they're completely off. So this thing is making no noise. Uh, which is fantastic and even you know when you are gaming this thing stays nice and quiet You know we can see here this massive heatsink that they have um, Although not nearly as massive as uh, what's on the RTX 3090 I mean that card weighs like almost five pounds, which is kind of ridiculous This one's like a pound and a half lighter or something uh, But you know we can see the fins going all the way across the full length of the card We can see this nice back plate that AMD gave us as well so we have cooling on the back and then at the top, once again, we can see all this open area that the uh, air vents out of the sides and, uh, you know, this Radian logo, which also lights up uh, and, you know, we have this nice uh, contrasting red trim. So quite frankly, you know, this card looked really nice in my case. Um, and if I w didn't already have all that water cooling infrastructure, I would honestly have really no motivation to put this card underwater. It just does a good job of keeping itself cool and does a good job of staying quiet. So let's start taking this card apart. Um, we're going to start by just removing all of the screws on here that secure the uh, back plate and we're going to be using a uh, Phillips number one head to do that. Now you can see the uh, back plate just gently lifts right off and we can take a look at the underside. Um, it's interesting they've got some recesses in here uh, for like these various, uh, you know, uh, PCB mounted components, but uh, there, there aren't any uh, thermal pads. So it, I guess what that means is uh, this backplate really isn't being used for cooling all that much. Um, 
at least not directly to the uh, ICs on the uh, PCB here, um, but it's still a very solid piece. You know, it, you can see it's it's pretty it's decently thick. You know, like a what couple millimeters or whatever, and and nice and rigid. Like you know, it flexes a little bit, but overall, this is a solid quality piece. Even though the uh, uh, texture on the back is rough, it doesn't look that great. So one thing you'll probably want to do before you know we go ahead and pull the. Uh, PCB off is we want to remove these connectors from the board and the reason why is there's not a whole lot of wire so after you remove the heat sink from the PCB like there's still really no working space to get in there and kind of get them. so you can see I'm using this little uh, pry tool here and what I did is I just kind of put it on the sides there and I used it to slowly you know pry up this connector off of the uh, receptacle in the PCB and then I'm going to do the same thing on this other one now we're going to move to the bracket side of the card and we're going to use that Phillips number one to remove these larger screws. Okay, next we are going to use that uh, same Phillips number one head and we're going to remove a bunch more of these other little screws that hold the uh, PCB to the cooler. Um, and we're not going to do anything on this uh, center, um, you know, main GPU mounting bracket quite yet. Not, we'll, we'll do this last. Okay, now we can finally take off the uh, main mounting bracket here for the heatsink. So we'll need to use our Phillips number one uh, head and go ahead and unscrew these four screws. All right, now that all of the screws are removed, let's slowly pry the uh, cooler off of the PCB. Okay, so here we see, you know, the top of the card PCB and the uh, old cooler as well. And, you know, I was kind of concerned for, for a second uh, looking at the, the block and how much empty open area there was on this side. Well, we can see on the stock cooler here, there's really nothing. There's no thermal pads or anything making contact or anything on the board over here. So that concern was really unfounded. And, you know, I really shouldn't see any degradation performance. You know, it's solid right here. So the airflow from that heat sink isn't actually blowing on the PCB over there. So nothing to worry about. Some other things to note uh, looking at the stock cooler is uh, AMD is actually using a pretty decently thick uh, thermal pad on the core. Uh, we can also see that there's this nice uh, exposed copper face that makes a, a connection with all of the things that need cooling like the core and the various memory ICs. And then you know we can see your standard uh, thermal pads uh, lining everywhere else that needs contact cooling. And funny enough if I zoom in on some of these thermal pads here that got left over on the uh, card itself. Well, yeah, that's obviously the fingerprints of whoever was sticking these on here. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and take one of these other little pick or scraper tools. I'm just going to, you know, remove all of the uh, stock uh, thermal pads that are got left on here. And then I can add my own fingerprint to them as I stick them back on the snack cooler. Now let's go ahead and take our IPA rubbing alcohol and go ahead and clean off the main die and also, you know, each of the memory chips as well. All right, now it's time to prep the water block. So we're going to place it on a uh, raised surface. I've got it on the uh, GP box here. And we want this edge to be hanging off a little bit because when we put the card on it, well, you know, the PCIe bracket is going to overhang. And if you put it on a flat surface, well, it's going to cause us to stand up and not uh, on flat against the card. So we need to have some clearance for that. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to undo the cable for these guys because I want to be able to access it. I don't want them to be, you know, caught up or trapped in here when I put the card uh, flat on there. So I'm going to undo this and run the leads out of this little uh, recess over here on the left. Okay, now I'm going to pull off this plastic protective covering and uh, it's raised over here on one edge so you can get under it and lift it up nice and easily. And then we can take the card PCB and slowly place it on the uh, water block. And you know, you want to eyeball and try and align all the holes as you're doing this. Now that the card is aligned to the uh, water block, we can go ahead and take the Corsair backplate and then go ahead and uh, place that on the uh, p back side of the PCB. And uh, once again, you know, I'll try and align the holes as best you can. And once that's done, then we can go ahead and take the little black screws Corsair supplied along with the uh, Phillips number one head and uh, begin fastening everything together. So for uh, screwing these uh, screws in, I'm starting on the uh, ones around the core, uh, the same ones that uh, you know secured the the bracket, the tensioning bracket, and I'm kind of going in a pattern, uh, you know, just going um, 
diagonally across and then going to the other uh, opposite side. And I'm not screwing them down and, and cinching them all the way. I'm just using very light pressure just till I start to feel resistance. And now that I've got you know all four of these corners in, then I'm going to go ahead and go in kind of that same uh, crosswise motion and uh, tighten them down to make sure I have even thermal contact over the core. Once this core area is done, then you can go ahead and just put all the rest of them in. So now I've got all of the various screws into the back plate, going through the PCB and into the uh, water block. You should have no screws left over. The one screw that's not blatantly obvious is this one over here on the right. So if you're down to your last screw and you can't figure out where that goes, well, it goes over here. Okay, so here is the uh, block all on the card now. And uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in these little plugs. And uh, the way the plug should be is you should have one plug on each bank. Um, you can never have both plugs on one bank because, well, that means then the flow is just bypassing your card. So I'm going to put one over here. And I'm going to use this included plug tool to screw it down. And of course, I want you to use this plug tool so that you don't accidentally over torque these. And then I am going to place my other plug on this other backside bank right there. And once again, use that plug tool to cinch it down. And then go ahead and add your fittings. So I'm going to put my quick disconnect fitting here. I love quick disconnects. They make taking stuff in and out so easy on a water-cooled setup. So one thing I was not expecting um, was that actually these old Bits Power compression fittings from my uh, half inch ID, three quarter inch OD tubing don't actually fit here. And uh, what happens is, is it, it, it interferes with this uh, corner of the, uh, the, uh, the back plate. So I can't use my compression fittings, which I had used before. Uh, so unfortunately, unless since I don't have any little uh, extensions, uh, I'm just going to have to use a barb for now. But that's just one thing you might want to check for <laughs> before you get to this point like I did. And if you do decide to use an extension to push this out so you can fit a compression fitting, um, you'll probably want an extension that goes about 11 millimeters or more. All right, so here is the card uh, all ready to get popped in the system. You can see, you know, there's water in there because I decided to pre-prime it in order to uh, speed up the air bleeding process. So let's go pop it in. And there's the card. Well, let's go ahead and fire things up. And you can see because we primed it, it bled very quick and easily. So one thing I gotta say about the uh, LEDs on this thing, um, you know, I did have to use the adapter and then I did have to hook it up to the uh, LED header on my motherboard. So if you don't do that well, then, you know, no pretty colors. So there you have it. That's the Corsair uh, water block for the 6900 XT. Uh, I'm sure this thing will keep my GPU nice and cool. Not that I do a ton of gaming these days anyhow, but Oh well, I guess uh, pretty colors, right?